and welcome to Awake Ones. My name's Lorraine Flaherty. I'm Alexandra Winman. I'm Sally Poinsettina. And today we have our very special guest, Mr Chris Fitchu. Hello With girl. Once again. How are we? Welcome back Chris. Thanks for having me back. And today we're going to be talking about cycles and the different cycles of life. Also known as Chris's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, this is birthday episode. I have just turned 40 and, you know, I was really excited about becoming 40 and excited about the decade ahead. And, you know, a lot of people, like, they get to these turning point ages and they sort of panic, don't they? And they're all like, oh my God, I'm turning 40. But I think it's to be embraced, um, especially, I believe, in my heart of heart, the 40s, the, the fifth decade of our life cycle, Five is also my lucky number. And um, I think it's uh, gonna be a decade, and I already feel it, from all the sort of hard work I feel I put in uh, during the thir my 30s. I did a lot of spiritual work. I went in inside, I did a lot of work with a lot of great practitioners, including your good selves. Um, you know, unpicked a lot of, of layers of my own soul and my own journey, um, and quite an introvert. Mm -hmm. Um, and now I'm 40. I mean, even though I'm generally a naturally extrovert person, <laughs> really, <laughs> um, um, you know, I still, you know, found a lot more um, solace in solitude in my 30s and did a lot of working out and didn't really push myself out into the world to my full potential, I felt. Um, you know, and, and I've sort of been looking into it a lot and I find, you know, you get a lot of people really succeeding in their sort of 40s. Um, as you do in you know throughout your whole life, um, that's not to dismiss any age at any point. But um, no, don't don't miss out the fifties. <laughs> we'll, 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 come to, we'll come to the fifties because they're equally as important. Um, and I really do believe that um, that that life works in cycles. So you'll get from naught to nine when you're first born. You're sort of in extrovert mode where you're touching and you're feeling and you're exploring and you're learning and you're you know, excited by everything exterior. Um, and then of course you go into your teens and you go back into yourself. Mm -hmm. In your teens, we all know, we started to sort of question the world, question ourselves, question our parents, question everything. Um, obviously you're at school and your challenges of it, when you're at school and how to cope at school. And even though you, some of us profess to be very confident at school, inside you were just like, you know, in turmoil. Um, and then 20s, you left home and you're exploring the world and everything again was much more external and I'm going to look at that and I can now travel the world and I can learn this and I can get a proper adult job and some of us even more get little houses. Um, some of us not if we live in London. Even little <laughs> And um, yeah, you, but then, you, you know, you're also spending all your sort of like student loan and any money you get and you're just you don't care about anything because life's just so long you know and then you get back to your 30s and the cycle goes back in and you start to evaluate all the you know the the messes up that you've done in your 20s and <laughs> you know you start worrying about the debt you've accrued and you have to sort of like panic about that and you know you might have had an excessive 20s which I certainly did and then you have to do a lot of <laughs> rebuilding a lot of you know sort of working things out internally and, and I certainly had my spiritual awakening and opening when I was 33 mm -hmm. um, which I think is very auspicious in my sense because I was born on Christmas day and uh, Jesus as we know died at 33 not that I have got one confidence. I, I, I do not think I'm Jesus <laughs> but I, mean, I, I just was you know I mean even though we know that Jesus might have been born on that day. It's in your mind, yeah. when you're born on it that day. It was actually February, apparently. But you know, like, you know, that cycle, when I was 33, was the, almost the death of the old me yeah. and the birth of the new, but that new me was very confusing and I had a lot of work to do internally and I had to see a lot of different people that helped me on my way. I mean, Lorraine, you helped me so much on my, on my um, you know, past lives and working out how they linked um, to my current. And obviously Alex worked on my kind of this life and how my fragments that I've been sending out around the universe, how to bring them together. And of course, I thank you so much for that. Um, and then, yes, yeah, as, as I've got to the end of my 30s, everything's becoming so much more clear. And I sort of all these pieces of breadcrumbs around the entire, you know, world that I've been spreading or trying to yearn to learn. You know, I've been to the uh, Peruvian jungle to do ayahuasca. I've been to see John of God over in Brazil. 
I've done ashrams in India, I've done loads of courses in London, and ultimately gets to the point to end of your thirties when you're like, I think it's time to put it all into practice yeah. and to use all this inner knowledge that I now know, I fully feel like I know my soul. Mm -hmm. And as I've just, you know, gone through my 40th birthday, gone through, you know, the final winter solstice of my 30s, I've put, you know, into the ether, the sacrifice of my old sort of self and put it all in together to really come into the 40th decade with all of this knowledge and power and to put it in back out into the world mm. and go back to the extrovert, to the external, um, to take what I've taken uh, and learnt and to teach others, to spread the word, to pass on the knowledge, to serve, you know, and therefore I feel so ready for my 40s and that's where I feel where I'm at. I think anyone else in their, you know, 40s or any age, you should look at where you're at in that cycle, in that decade and really kind of like own it. You know, it was only sort of towards my late 30s where I owned being in that place and owned being destructing and, and destroying the old me to, to create the new. Because as we know, we can't really create from anything unless it's been destroyed. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm very excited. That's yeah. my stance on that. <laughs> what is, because you just turned 40 as well. Yeah, not Sadly. just, uh, <laughs> but in summer, end of summer. Um, I think we're six months apart, but I've always loved getting older. I think mean, being young for me, it was hard. It was really, it was kind of trapped in a home with parents that it just shouldn't have been parents. Um, and the only positive I found in it was, well, at least I'm a year older, a year closer to getting out of the home, a year to this, a year where I've learned so much that I can now spend a year not learning this stuff again. Um, so for me, getting old, I don't know, I may reach a point where getting older is no longer exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the the aesthetic and the external stuff, I, uh, it's neither here nor there. But I just love knowing what I know now yeah. versus trying to navigate with an 18-year-old's mm. knowledge and, and understanding. I just think, a bit like fruit, monks eat really ripe just before it turns fruit and food because they believe like people when it's at its oldest it's at its you know it has the most goodness it has the most nutrients that it will ever have right before it turns and, and kind of dies as, as food and I think that's the same as people mm. it just get yeah. better with age juicy I mean you may look well, you may look worse with age but <laughs> as, a, as a human well Holly Street's only down the road yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know, I'll just, I'll wrinkle up like <laughs> old... I don't know, like I think I I've got more guy. wrinkles now, but I think I look better now than I did in my 20s. I don't think there's that big of a difference. I mm. sort of, you, you kind of come into a maturity, I think. But it's just how you are on your you inside. You appreciate yourself. I think if you're attractive yeah. in, on the inside, if you've got that self-love, which, as I said, I certainly built in my 30s, you just exude it, mm. and then people are drawn to you, you know, mm. whether they're physically drawn to you or not, and mm. that's a much more exciting uh, attraction, I think, than just yeah. physical, you know, mm. superficial surface style. Yeah, mm. and I think being in my 50s, which is, you know... Looking amazing, and, and and my yes, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> All these streets just around oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They haven't lured me in yet. Yeah. <laughs> they they haven't one to. day. No, but, they yeah. don't need to. But I just think that it is, when you hit those, the, the, the decades, there's a, a plateau that you reach, and it does change. There, mm. It is a whole new phase and a whole new space that you get to. And I think that, for some reason, it can cause a lot of trauma for people getting to that point. It's either going to be a big celebration where you really embrace it, or it can be really, really difficult when you get to that point. And I remember hitting my 40s and not being overly happy with where I was at that point. So 40 for me was a relief mm. to let go of uh, mm. the, the 30s. There had been some amazing things that had happened, but I was really conscious that I didn't, well, I didn't feel like I was who I wanted to be. So it, that shift made me really determined to go find it and clear the decks and let go of what what and who I didn't need anymore so it, it prompted that and I don't know when I got to my 50s I think I was much happier and much more comfortable and much happier to reach much happier with what I'd done in that decade and I think that was the point I in felt quite 40s. fulfilled in yeah. my 40s that I'd written and published my book 
and well, it depends what you're saying about like so, putting yeah. things out there and, and, and sharing yeah know, and, and giving yeah and there was a real sense then of oh what will I accomplish in this 10 years I think it does kind of put it into a bit mm. of a box mm. so what am I going to accomplish this time so the goals and the dreams and they are different mm. I think as you get to each each different decade mm. Yeah, I completely agree. The 30s for me was definitely delving right into the self and very spiritual journey, very much about yeah. finding out what makes what made me and the universe and everything tick and my place in the world and all of that. And definitely teenage years was like that too. I just wanted to be away from everybody and, and mm. you know, where I don't fit here, I'm just going to find where I fit. And then, yeah, I think it's, it's the same. I, I just turned 41. How are your forties so far? <laughs> it's not good for my waist standing. Yeah, my fortieth birthday. Travel, you've been to Egypt. Fortieth birthday was an incredible experience. That was weird because I kind of felt I was totally prepared to hit forty. I was like, yeah, yeah, it doesn't bother me. Like when I hit thirty, I'm not bothered about getting older. But when I hit forty, it came out of the blue, like all this kind of repressed anger and rage, and like at almost like being this good girl or you know whatever it was trying to fit into this what this constructive world came up but then after the 40th birthday it's just got better and better and yes. she did do quite a powerful birthday speech well, this birthday speech <laughs> was just like sec met on speed um but yeah i've been traveling the world quite a lot and yeah just kind of making plans and yeah now it is about sort of grounding the work and bringing it forward yeah. bringing it out into a wider arena i think so and I think I might have regressed a little bit because when I got to my 50th birthday, I made everybody dress up as the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, I'm going to go backwards. Yeah. I'm just going to go and play and, you know, not take anything too seriously anymore. But I think in your 50s, you've been doing a lot more creativity. You've been doing yeah. all your mandalas. Lots. You've been writing yeah. a lot. Yeah. And it is, you're, you're creating, yeah. you're building mm. that inner, sort of those inner layers in order to build again so you can come into the next cycle yeah. of... I mean, it'd be really interesting to see, like, you know, when, at what age, different people peaked in their, mm. I say peak, because you have many peaks in your life, but yeah. some pinnacle moments of various, I say successful people as well, but everyone's successful in their own right. Mm -hmm. You know, some people's idea of success is to become, you know, the best nurse they can be, or, you know, to have the family that they need. It's not always, I mean, I'm always been very ambitious. The Capricorn in me has always driven me to get to the top of the mountain. But uh, opposite to probably the uh, the sun signs, which is Leo and Cancer, the, sorry, the, say the sun signs, the summer signs, yeah. you know, as winter people, we, we always do tend to take a lot longer to reach the full potential of what we really know we can be. And so therefore, that's why I think, you know, when I get into my 40s, I'm excited because I know, I always knew from a child that I was always going to succeed or get to where I wanted to be. Well, I still don't know exactly where that is, but I know that I've got a lot more to add to my system to be able to get to where I want to be. But without living in a sort of worry or turmoil that I haven't done it yet. Mm. And so, you know, I'm quite excited about the building, similar to what you were saying about getting older and getting to that point. But maybe opposite to maybe the Leo signs who, you know, they're, they're born ready, aren't they? They're born in the sun. <laughs> All their parents are like, everyone's naked and having parties and barbecues and, and friendly and happy because it's the summer. Oh. And they smother that energy onto the baby and the baby's sort of, you know, that's why they're very sort of show-offy and proud and, you know. I mean, you know, they are Leos. All my friends are Leos. <laughs> friends that are Leos are just like, here I am. Yeah. Whereas the winter people, um, even though I might be here I am as well, it's always done a bit with caution and, mm -hmm. you know, and we wait until, you know, the right opportunities to strike born in the winter, you're born in the cold, you're born in the dark. Historically, you know, it was like, have we got enough food to keep this baby alive till the spring? And, and that energy is put on you. Um, but I always say that, and what interests me is I'm living in the Northern Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. So obviously we've just had the, uh, the well, we've just passed the uh, winter solstice, and um, which depicts the, the, the earth being furthest away from the sun. And so we, you know, we give our offerings and our sacrifices to the sun to help it grow into the sun we know in the summer. But then how is that in the Southern Hemisphere? Like, is that the same? Like, do all the star signs as traits swap? Mm. It's an interesting thought, actually. Oh, I think yeah. they do, because yeah. I'm a spring baby. Absolutely. But, but spring... I'm September. So in English terms, I'm autumn. 
but in Australian terms, I'm spring. And I always think I'm such a spring baby. Like, I, I do really well at the beginning of a project when things are just budding. Yeah. And it's like carrying it through to fruition might be another thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, the, I start things all the time. I'm great at starting yeah. stuff. Like, it's like, yes, let's birth this. Um, and, <laughs> and I'm bored now, let's birth something else. So I'm really good at being a, a, a springtime kind of baby. But then there was always something... I think in terms of like past lives or maybe my um, cultural heritage, there was always something that hearkened to like a cold Christmas or a cold, like when I came over here, it felt really right to be in these right. seasons and these. So I don't know. I'm probably a bit confused. Like, <laughs> the Canadian rhythms are all over the place. I'd love to meet a, a December Australian, like to see if they are like a Leo, you know, yeah. or if a, uh, you know, a, an August Australian is like Capricorn, you know, I mean, does, yeah, does that just Yeah, interesting actually, Ooh. if I think about it. Um, yeah, no, my, uh, I have a couple of Aussie Leo friends and they're pretty out there as well. So I... I Aussie, we're just yeah, the same. Just the same, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's interesting. <coughs> I, used to, I used to notice a cycle in my life, and I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, whether it was just a personal thing, where it was sort of every odd year... I've got to get this right how, in terms of like um, the, the number of the mm. year was always um, a really positive year. So if the number added up to it, if it was ended in an, an odd number, it was always a number, a year that was things would go well, it would always be really smooth flowing, it would be really good. And then every even year always felt a bit clunk to me. And I noticed it more when I was at school. Um, sort of in the even years at school and things like that. But I don't know. It's, was it, when you say, the, do you mean the whole year, like 2018? Yeah, would be, it would be like, uh, so... 11, no, yeah, 11. Yeah, so like, if I work this out, yeah, because I, I was at school in even years, like year six was an even year. Right. And so it was an even year at school, but also an even year in the year. Um, and it was always a bit weird. Like the odd years were brilliant. I had great teachers, friends. Everything was smooth. And then in the even years, everything just felt clumsy. Did you and start? Weird. Did you start the year thinking, "Oh no, it's an even no. year. Oh my god, you know, putting that on it." I didn't you... notice it until my final year at school. It was weird. I sort of went, back. "Hang on a minute. There's this weird pattern," and it sort of happened. It happened into uni. Um, and then it's sort of, and then now it's just gone, gone haywire. I don't know what's going on these days. I don't think anyone does. Um, but yeah, it's a really weird pattern. I never, I never um, unpicked it or got to the bottom of what it was. But it just seemed to almost, it must have been a belief system or something that said, you've had a good year, now you're owed a bad year. Or something like that. Mm, it was it like was this good, bad year. Some sort of karmic balance. But it could it's also be this feminine masculine thing. It was the yin to the yang. Yeah. Yeah. The yin to the yang. Yeah. And I think, again, like... You know, a bad year, what is that? Is that when everything Well, not goes, so much bad, but, but more challenging, well, yeah, less but, fluid. But we learn yeah. more in challenges. Totally. We learn more in, in <laughs> hardship. We learn more in destruction. More, we learn more in failure. Yeah. And actually, that's the cycle, isn't it? Yeah. You can't really succeed unless you come from right. failure. And I, all my great successes have come after a bad patch or yeah. a dark patch or yeah. something gone wrong. You know, I know so many people who have had horrendous relationships and they finally got out yeah. and they're just, you know, gone through a horrible time, but then they'll find someone glorious. And it's you can't really find that same person glorious without going through that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, going back to what I was saying earlier, you know, out of uh, destruction comes creation mm -hmm. from, from dark comes light. And uh, and that's the glory of life. That's the glory of that's the glory. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it goes and that goes back to our cycles. It's yeah. like, you know, can you have an expressive extrovert, you know, external and out there decade if you've not done the groundwork in the previous decade, mm. you know. The calendar is probably not gonna be very very yeah. fruitful if you haven't actually gone through and done the work that And yeah, that's some people that do unfortunately just stay at a plateau of safety through not wanting to go there through mm. fear, they probably don't have as, as volatile yeah. and noticeable time. And that's not to say that people that do are anything much more special or wonderful, but, you know, it's, it's as we know, the more work you do, yeah. the more you get out of life. And mm. that's, that's what well, I found that quite a big fact. Mm. Yeah, well, and I think we're all, <laughs> we're all very, very but, aware of that, work that needs to be done we've, we've all done it we? we've all been through those 
dark yeah. nights of the soul cycles yeah. when you come through the other side and yeah, but I love that don't to get angry at the results you didn't get from the work you didn't, didn't do. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Mm. Yeah. Um, and none of us really want to do the work. Um, you're kind of just thrown into it. <laughs> <laughs> the universe yeah. just forces you into it once you start. Well, the Pandora's box gets open because it has to. Probably yeah. most of us have gone through something to force it. Mm-hmm. And that goes through serendipity, fate, destiny whatever it is, the melting pot of how we got here, whether it's due to past lives or the purpose that we've chose to come here in this life, it happens. We find people that are like-minded and we do more work and we egg each other on to do more yeah. work and we inspire each other that we're actually heading the right direction, um, whichever one it is, all different but very similar and all complementary, you know. I mean, you guys have inspired me and I'm sure I've inspired You've you. Inspired in different us ways. in many ways. But, yeah. you know, in different ways, you know, and, and, you know, whatever you call it, mm. whether it's work or healing or whatever, it's all for the good of this this universal shift that's going on on this planet and everywhere. Um, you know, again, probably we're in a cycle of that coming into this fruition. Um, we know that there's a lot gone on this last past last year and hopefully that will continue this year. And again, the work that's gone in last year will be seen this year in 2019. Yeah. Um, I don't know much about this year. I've, I've entered it quite blind. It's an odd year. Oh no, you jinxed it. No, no, that's, <laughs> that's, a, good that's one. a good one. Oh, you, it's a good one. Do you know what yeah, I think it is? I think odd years um, are feminine. So it's like uneven. It's an uneven year. So to me, it's probably more feminine um, energy and more fluid energy. And this I thought last year three. was quite feminine, though, with all what went on with the, yeah. w- the women ruling <laughs> the world. Oh, yeah, and yeah, that was really the hashtag Me Too and it? all the people, yeah. co- the voices of the women coming and out. Now it's like, you know, mind, body, spirit. It's the three treasures, isn't it? It's so the, the Holy Trinity. The work it's that the, the girls put in last year yeah. coming to fruition exactly. this year. Yeah. That was breaking through, wasn't yeah. it? That was yeah. like spring. So yeah. now we can see the, the, the can't fruits of wait the Wait to see what you all do, yeah. see what all these fabulous female leaders do. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, I'm the biggest fan of women. I mean, they're just the most glorious things ever. I mean, I love an Aryan woman, a strong woman, you know, actually the star sign Aries. I'm always mm. drawn to them. My headmistress was Aries, Hilary Duvet is Aries, a few others. I'm there. Aries Rising. Sorry? I'm Aries Rising. Oh, of course you are. <laughs> Which means, obviously, in your latter part of your life, the latter cycle, your your rising cycle yeah. will come into... Coming into more, my war goddess. more dominant <laughs> phase, you yeah. know. And, yeah. And that's interesting. It's interesting. I, I know I'm coming into my Scorpio, which is my inner, which has its advantages and disadvantages. <laughs> we'll be nice to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's much more mystical um, than the much more practical Capricorn and yeah. I kind of really feel that I can feel but I also feel the sort of juxtaposition and struggle between my outer sun ego and that inner I still want to be the Capricorn climbing and being ambitious whilst at the same time the inner the, the Scorpio is like come on now let's just you know be real and let's be truthful and let's be mystical and let's access one's abilities and powers to help and serve yeah. But you can do both. I kind of can go up the mountain with my cape. Yeah, <laughs> <but. laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spread a little magic. Yeah. And spread a little more. It's, it's, it's and if anyone misbehaves, you sting in the tail. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do tend to do that. It's not nice. No. But I, if, you, if one gets pushed, don't you? Yeah. I mean, if one gets done with love. Exactly, <laughs> from the heart. I'm a cancer and have a big pincer, so I can <laughs> <laughs> kind of sting off. Yeah, <laughs> two. <laughs> Um, I'll just be mediating. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, but yeah, no, I mean, other than that, I mean, I think like, you know, I am interested in numerology. I don't know that much about it. And, you know, obviously it it comes when when you sort of resonate with a book or with a a speech from someone or a reading from someone, um, or if you get like a YouTube or tattoo loop, um, you start to sort of like understand the the meaning of numbers and... Mm. You know, even, um, you know, when we watched that, um, the play about the 27 Club, Mm -hmm. I find that very interesting that 27 is obviously the end of three cycles. Uh, Nine is a very auspicious and very interesting number of the beginning and end of a cycle. I know that 2018 was number one in in years cycle and we're now in two, so 
much more about duality this year and much more about coming together and much more about group consciousness whereas last year was planting the seeds and um, you know this 27 a lot of people they come to the end of their light you know a lot of people dying all the, the famous people and the Amy Winehouse Kurt Cobain and the you know Janis Joplin and Jimi Hendrix it's also your sat and return around that time isn't it so yeah. it's a very it's challenging time, time. Yeah. And then, you know people will come to the peak of their brilliance yeah. or you know destruction of their brilliance and and, and the, the light will burn out mm. but leaving a legacy that will inspire so many and if that was their purpose on life on earth then and how magical and how selfless in a way mm. even though it was quite traumatic but inspiring i mean i'm fascinated by it mm. yeah yeah well and there's a lot a lot to be explored in mm. numerology and cycles and seasons but i think we probably we could wax lyrical all day we could talk about this all day we could talk to we'll still be here talking about <laughs> another cycle if i'm not careful <laughs> Well, thank you for having me. Thank you so Let much me for joining that us. off my chest. Yeah. <laughs> well, happy birthday and happy thank new you. cycle. Thank you. Wish me luck for my 40th. Oh, and yeah. I'll see you when I'm 50. <laughs> <laughs> if not <laughs> before, before, of course. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. And thank you for watching. <laughs>